What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer website and doing a little bit of a deep dive. We're not going to spend too much time on the website, well, because there's not much of a website. Instead, we're going to be mostly spending on the trailer, but there's a few things that I want to mention first from the website. The website says, with these new titles, the Pokemon series takes a new evolutionary step, allowing you to explore freely in a richly expressed open world. They did not say at any point that Pokemon Legends Arceus was going to be an open world. Literally, soon as they start, before the first trailer, this is going to be an open world. An open world means that there's not going to be any sort of loading screens or different maps in between towns, routes, cities, waterways, things like that. However, that leads the question of this story progression is going to be open world as well. Thinking back to the original anime, and my knowledge of the anime is somewhat limited, but I do know that the gym leaders would typically have multiple sets of Pokemon, and depending on how many badges the trainer had while choosing to challenge them, they would, you know, have a different team. And we've seen that exact mechanic implemented throughout all of Pokemon. Like the second time you go to face the Elite Four, they have a different team ready to go. And internally, that's just a flag. The flags in Pokemon Legends Arceus, instead of going on a, is this done, is this done, is this done, it runs on a number system, and the number system is based off of how many things you've progressed throughout the entire game. That leads me to believe that, you know, if you do these seven tasks, then these Pokemon are going to be this level, maybe these gym leaders are going to be this level and have this team, as opposed to you have these 12 things done, they're going to be higher levels. So a dynamic scaling system for both overworld Pokemon and trainers, allowing a more dynamic system for badges and story progression, does seem like it's mechanically possible. They say that they're taking a new evolutionary step. We have to wait and see what that means. The website also goes on to say, various towns blend seamlessly into the wilderness with no borders. You'll be able to experience the true joy of the Pokemon series, battling against wild Pokemon in order to catch them, now in an open world game that players of any age can enjoy. If we look at this battle scene right here, it definitely seems more reminiscent of the battle style in Pokemon Legends Arceus versus the battle style of Pokemon Sword and Shield. On the press site, we also get to see this battle image where we could see a young trainer here with Hisuian Zoroark. Kind of feels like, yes, they're doing the same battle style as Pokemon Legends RCS, but we're going to have to wait and see. This also raises the question of, are you going to be able to catch Pokemon without battles? And the sentence here that says, you'll be able to experience the true joy of the Pokemon series battling against wild Pokemon in order to catch them, leads me to believe that they are not going to be implementing the various balls with different physics and catching Pokemon in the overworld. Instead, that language right there leads me to believe that they are going back to the traditional system of you have to throw out a Pokemon in an attempt to catch wild Pokemon, much to my dismay, because I really enjoy the whole overworld catching dynamic. The three partner Pokemon that we've seen in the trailer are going to be um, Sprigatito or Sprigatito, Fuecoco or Fuecoco and Quaxley. How will you meet these three and what sorts of Pokemon are they? It's a grass cat Pokemon, one foot four inches, nine pounds, overgrow, same ability pretty much every grass starter has. We have Fuegoko, the fire croc Pokemon, Almost seems like, you know, a little fire Digimon wearing wearing a fun little mask. Now I think of like Pirates of the Caribbean, how they betray undiscovered tribes of people, how they just, you know, either wear a skull or a painting of a skull, things like that. I kind of like that design on him. Interested to see what a fire croc third form is going to look like. That brings us to Quaxly, who is looks like a, a, a Spaniard or a French duck. The duckling Pokemon, this is the one I'm least interested in. Instead, I love Fuecoco. And Sprigatito obviously has its own, you know, appeal. Introducing the main characters. We see that your outfit will vary depending on whether you play Pokemon Scarlet or Violet. Who knows what kind of story will await you. So we can see that Pokemon Scarlet, they're going to be wearing orange outfits over here. And in Pokemon Violet, they're going to be wearing Violet outfits. Oh, I should probably say that they're wearing Scarlet outfits. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Also, real hot take. Kinda not crazy about the whole child aesthetic. For the first time, yes, we look 11. 
that's an 11 year old. And even in Sword and Shield, you know, the 11 year olds looked a little bit older, but no, that's a child. That's absolutely a child. And just the big doll eyes seem like sort of a, I feel like we're starting to get into the uncanny valley. If you're familiar, when creating an artificial image of a person, if it gets too close, your brain just sees it as there's something wrong with that and it's not real, which makes you absolutely hate it. As opposed to, if it looked more realistic, it could pass. If it looked less realistic, you'd be like, okay, that's not real. But instead, that little gray area there, the uncanny valley, it's not a good place to be. And between the shadow effects and the way that the, the lighting hits the characters, I'm really not a fan of it. But good news is you don't see the player's face all too much and hopefully, you know, we could wear masks or something. That would make me happy. Just some original thoughts between the two different outfits. It seems like the story is going to be written that maybe there are two competing schools between the children. You have the Scarlet School and you have the Violet School and maybe your rival is going to be from the other colored school and then you're going to be going through and progressing or maybe your rival is going to be the other appearance of gender that you do not choose. We're going to have to and find out or there's just going to be one synonymous rival but again we're going to have to wait and see getting into the trailer most of this is this beginning scene where we have the security guard going into the game freak headquarters slash game freak office and he's looking around there's really not too much to see until we actually get into the main room here one of the first detail scenes that we see here, we can see a Great Ball and Ultra Ball in the background. This leads us to believe that yes, we are going to be using the modern mechanic of Pokeballs. And over here, we have sort of a cloth draped over a chair that has a sort of a spider web with a triangle shape on it and a little thing off to the side. No idea what that could be. Maybe a new spider Pokemon. Maybe it's nothing. Coming to the screen, we see our first image of what appears to be the map of the region, which seems to be a square or, you know, somewhat of a square. I can't help but believe that this is heavily inspired by Iberia. Iberia, probably known as the Iberian Peninsula to my fellow Americans, is going to be including Portugal and Spain, located just below France and just above Morocco in the Mediterranean Sea, which also includes a stretch of islands off to the east side, which we see present in this picture here as well. I feel as though this is sort of following the whole theme that they did for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is the United Kingdom, which you started the game in Scotland and then you made your way over to England, being an upside down version of the region. This seems to be just a one to one, like that's that landmass, that's that landmass. We even have this dip down going here on the southern border that appears over here as well. We have this sort of slanted angle coming up the right side. This is one to one Spain and Portugal. Which also brings us that, you know, we're di directly below France, where Pokemon X and Y took place. So that's neat. Because we're right below France, this could mean that many of the Pokemon that appeared in Pokemon X and Y who have been absent over the last several games and regions may make a return, including the starter line of Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie. We haven't seen any of them ever since Sun and Moon. This may be our first time ever seeing Vivalion ever since Pokemon X and Y, so that could be pretty exciting. The whole Flabebe line may be present as well, as well as Skiddo and Go Goat. We haven't seen them in a while. Fufuro, which if you were to transfer Fufuro from X and Y into Pokemon Home, it would revert back to its default form. Pokemon Go introduced the ability to transfer over the Pokemon and they keep their new designs, so we may see that mechanic coming to these games as well. Since we already saw Hisuian Zoroark, considering this is just below south of the region in which the Gumi line was first introduced, we may see Hisuian Gudra appearing here as well because you know, it's not the original region. Instead, it's slightly different from the original region. Same thing goes for Bergmite and Avalug. We may see their Hisuian forms returning. And now that I'm mentioning all these, now that we see Zygarde as being, you know, one of the Pokemon introduced in this game, it makes me look at this spider web again and this small image next to the spider web that we originally saw is faintly reminiscent of a Zygarde cell. That could just be me reading into it too much. We see coffee. This is a direct nod to how much caffeine and coffee is abused by game designers while trying to make a brand new game for us to all enjoy. We see this image of the clock here and we see that the hands are going absolutely crazy. We don't know why the hands of time are going crazy on this clock, 
but the design of the clock that we see here is very much in line with the sort of designs that are typical in Spain and Portugal. One of the scenes shows a large cache of gold and treasure. Don't know what that's all about. Maybe the fact that, you know, the Pokemon secrets are kept away like treasures. <laughs> Maybe there's gonna be sort of a plundering theme going on here. Harking back to the days of when Spain used to do large explorations, including, you know, Christopher Columbus, who quote unquote discovered America. This pot right down here, that's straight out of the Mediterranean. On one of our first images of the picture frame monitor that's going to go ahead and show us the trailer, we can see this shape over here, which seems to be a circle with details in the middle and then two lines coming out of the bottom. We're gonna be seeing that a little bit more and a little bit clearer and we're gonna investigate it further then. From here, the trailer actually goes into the animated trailer, but first I would like to continue looking at different things in the room here, which happens at the very end of the trailer where the Nintendo Switch OLED that's present in the player's room is here. We can see that we have an OLED switch, we have two additional regular V1 switches or regular switches, and then we see a switch light. This could be sort of an inclination that there is going to be sort of a four player multiplayer feature, similar to how the max raid dens were in Pokemon Sword and Shield. We also see these large orbs over here with that same circular pattern on the top of them. No idea what they are, but I'm starting to think that that pattern and maybe these orbs actually play a role into the game. We see the one large clock that we had a close up of before, but there is another clock present in the room. I wonder why they have two representations of time present in this trailer. Maybe it has something to do with time in the game. Maybe we're going to have sort of a wormhole thing or maybe space time distortion, some variation of that mechanic may be returning as well. In addition to that, we have two globes present. I don't know why you would ever need two globes other than maybe it's back to a nod of when the Spaniards went around the world and sort of ruled the world with spice trade and discovering other areas and other things that the Spaniards did during those times. I'm not a history major and I'm not going to go into too much detail that I don't know too much detail about. This angle shows us this globe again. However, right here, I would like to focus on this image, this star with this lightning bolt going through it. I don't know what this is. This could be an icon that's used on a Pokemon status screen. I think that an icon like this would fall very much in line with how the regional icons are represented throughout the different Pokemon games. The proper term for this is an origin mark, which is present on the Pokemon screen, which is very helpful when a Pokemon has been transferred through Pokemon Home. By the way, this game does say it's going to be compatible with Pokemon Home, although that information and the Pokemon Home update for BDSP and, and Legends Arceus was completely absent of this Pokemon Day Presents. We're then shown this image here, which has a variety of grapes. And uh, are these Valencia oranges or Seville oranges? I know that there's a very specific Spanish orange and I'm not exactly too sure what's going on with that. We see a really dope looking sandwich. Oh, look at that prosciutto. I want that prosciutto. But anyways, these oranges, probably the oranges that are native to the region and the Mediterranean. The grapes, definitely 110%, not a question in my mind, a reference to the very rich and vibrant wine industry that happens all throughout Spain and the Mediterranean. In addition, sangria, that may be a theme that we see in these games. Listen, England had its tea, Spain could have its sangria. Get off my back. When the camera pans toward the entrance, we see a little bit of sort of Spanish slash Moroccan tile on either side of the doorway. And then we see two crests or shields. The one on the left clearly represents an orange with sort of a wagon wheel in the middle. Oh, it's not a wagon wheel. Those are the slices of an orange. <laughs> and the one on the right, those are grapes. Again, I have a feeling that the, the grapes and the oranges are gonna be really big, really big for these games. This screen that shows us the three starters, first looking at the bottom left, we see the circle pattern here. We see eight small icons in the middle and a lane going down. And then we see some text that is completely non-legible. This could be a representation of what we're going to be seeing during the trailer of the town center with all of the different Pokemon types represented there. One of my mods, Jack Andy, who is from Portugal, actually enlightening me that this is called Calcada Por Portuguese, Calcada Portuguesa, roughly translated to the Portuguese sidewalk. An example of that being right here. 
This is similar to what we're going to see in the trailer in the very middle of town that has all the Pokemon types. I'm starting to think that this icon right here definitely representing this image here. If there are any people that are native of Spain and Portugal and would like to enlighten me on any of these details or facts, please leave them down below. Here's the starters. We don't know anything about them. We have not even seen them in game. From here, we have a wide view of the entire wall that's fully illuminated. That circle pattern that was present to the bottom left of the picture frame monitor is also present down here. Then we see the logo Pokemon Scarlet. We see the letters go across. I love the sort of crisscross diamond style that they have on Scarlet with these really flowy letters. Definitely reminds me of, you know, stylings of Spain, Morocco, and the Mediterranean. And Pokemon Violet, which is a stark contrast to that. Instead, it's much more modern. We have these sort of pointed lines coming up and sort of creating a V or W pattern going all throughout the logo. We see these white dots everywhere. That mixed with how the logos are actually shown on screen for the first time makes me feel like, yes, we definitely have a theme of space being involved. When the logo shows up, that definitely looks like a solar system. Tell, look at that and tell me that's not a solar system. That's a solar system, dude. We're seeing many representations of clocks. We're seeing representations of space. We've seen globes. We're talking about a new evolutionary era of Pokemon. There's no reason to not think that we're going to have some sort of idea being evolved with time and or space. There is one Pokemon that's definitely represented with space and that's Deoxys. Whether Deoxys has a role in this game or not, we're just gonna have to wait and see. When Pokemon Scarlet starts to pan onto the screen, we see a very similar sort of solar system style image come into play as well. Again, these are just theories, game theories. This last screen here focuses on the entranceway once again, again bringing into focus the shield icon here of the orange and the shield icon here of the grapes, which are present in the bottom left. And if we look to the bottom left, we can see the grapes and the oranges again, and a sandwich. This is in reference to the fact that I have not eaten today, and now I'm getting very hungry looking at that prosciutto. Now that we've overanalyzed every single thing in this room that I think is important, time to look at the actual animated trailer. First thing I want to point out is these five words at the bottom of the screen that every single person who's watching this video should see these five words and remember these five words. Game footage is not final. People have a tendency to look at this sort of game and they're like, oh, well, these graphics are garbage. Again, game footage is not final. We've seen this time and time over again, whether it's Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This footage that we're seeing here, it's going to look better at the final product. We're seeing this at least eight months away from final release. It's going to look better. Maybe not a whole lot better, but better. This image here shows us one very large city right in the middle. At the entranceway, we see a very large archway, and then it's entirely surrounded by large flowing hills. Spain being a much older city than what we have here present in the United States, it wasn't uncommon of cities to be built on large hills to make it harder for invading forces to sort of lay siege to the city. So it being on a hill, having large walls and borders surrounding it was very common. I don't know too much specifically about Spanish cities. That's just a whole idea throughout all of history. Well, see a rainbow. Make a wish. Our next sweeping shot here shows us a large body of water with sort of an archipelago of different islands throughout it. This could be a small area within the main region or this could be going out to the ocean. The sweeping shot just shows us a moon. There's a day night cycle, cool. This is our first look through some heavy fog at the actual city itself. We can see a large cathedral style building to the back right that we're going to be focusing on a little bit later. We see a very modern and nice looking Pokemon Center that kind of looks really out of place compared to everything else. The architecture style of these buildings, according to my mod Jack Andy, says that this architecture style is from the 1700s. We're now seeing an image sweeping out to show us a whole bunch of Starly that are present. This could be a cutscene. This could show us that Pokemon are able to run away like they do in Pokemon Legends Arceus. No idea. We see several Hoppips flying in front of these large windmill structures that don't seem to be moving at the same frame rate. We see several Petalil and Bounce Suites appearing next to each other. Again, grapes confirmed. This scene, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. This is the Crimson Mirelands. This is an exact tree model that we've seen in the Crimson Mirelands. This is exactly the grass in the Crimson Mirelands. There are Psyduck here like the Crimson Mirelands. We see this large flow of shallow water going into just nasty looking dirt. We see several small puddles everywhere. 
again, Crimson Mirelands. However, if we look at the Psyduck model itself, we see some very dramatic shadows coming down from the moonlight. And we see the Psyduck shadow being casted right below it as well. It does look like the shadows and the lighting is significantly better than what we've seen from Pokemon games in the past. We see this shot of a Meowth walking south, again with the same lighting dynamics going on. Meowth is cleaning itself, just you know, being a cat and whatnot. Granted, this is through, you know, YouTube downgrading of how videos look and Pokemon never shows videos in their highest quality anyways. However, if you look very closely at Meowth and it's gonna be much more obvious on other Pokemon later, there is a new trend that they started doing ever since new Pokemon Snap, that they're not ever changing the model of the Pokemon and how the Pokemon appears. Instead, what they do is instead of it just being a flat color, the texture of the Pokemon has very subtle details on there. It's very visible in new Pokemon Snap when looking at our box back, is present in Pokemon Legends Arceus when looking at the very subtle scales on Gyarados, and we see this pattern on Meowth that makes it look fuzzier. As you know, cat. Also, great, we don't have another new Meowth version. We have too many. We see Stone Journer in a large desert-like area with several ruins in the background. This is the first of many times that we're going to be seeing lens flares. If you're not familiar, this type of light is typically portrayed whenever a camera catches sun rays that are coming at it, that then the camera interprets it as different separations of the prism of light. So that's the reason we see a pink one over here and a yellow one over here. This is very common when referring to how a camera views things. However, our eyes typically don't depict these things because of, well, how our eyes are. Also, there's a lot of Clawitzers because, you know, you always need some paella in Spain, that's for sure. But look at that dramatic lighting on the Pelipper. This texture, hot garbage. Pelipper, lighting, beautiful. Also in this scene, this might just be perspective of how far away this one is versus this one, but we may have overworld sizes of Pokemon returning. If so, then, you know, there's a point to all the alpha Pokemon that I'm gathering in Pokemon Legends Arceus. We see a couple of Swablu hanging out on top of a rope with several banners hanging from it. Something very common in Spanish culture is going to be the fiestas. Every town and city, they have their own separate celebrations going on. I don't know if Carnival originates from here or if that's Latin America, but there's there's still, listen, there's so many Spanish themes that they could play off of. We have flamingo and flamingo dancers. Those are two separate concepts. The running of the bulls. We have paella, tapas. We have a rich and robust wine industry. There's so much that they could be playing off of here. I love Spanish food. We see a Pikachu just hanging out in the middle of the plaza. Yo, all of the NPCs, they just look too animated. Like they look like bad Pixar characters. Maybe it's because of the way the light is hitting them. Maybe it's because of the model itself or the textures. We see Blissey hanging out in town, taking a little siesta, that's for sure, running underneath an orange tree. Hopefully the trees get updated texture because that's not good. And this grass, what is this grass? Again, game footage not final. Gotta remember that, game footage not final. <laughs> Come on, this is a prime example of what I'm talking about, that even though Seviper, it's still the exact same model, same colors everywhere. Because of the way the light is hitting it, we see all of these scales become apparent throughout its entire body. I love this direction that they're taking it. It would appear from this early footage that we still have the same problem that appears in Pokemon Legends Arceus, that in front of certain textures and weather conditions, we have these weird lines that appear on the outside of a character or Pokemon models. Hopefully they get that fixed by time of release because it's a little jarring in PLA. These Larvitar look so good. So good. The whole thing of the Pokemon model looking weird in, fr in front of the background comes to the fact that there's no longer black outlines around the Pokemon. So because of that, we see this polygon here and it's just a result of the hardware it's running on. This Magnemite, come on, look at those shadows. Looks so nice, but again, we see these weird lines and shapes that happen on the outside of a Pokemon's model. 
We see this fun little tower over here with a, a little thing on top. This tower looks pretty much identical to the one that we saw in the desert slash sandstorm area over here. This could be that, you know, there was a war that was involved a long time ago and that part of the region was ruined. And these are, you know, the same structures, except these ones were destroyed many years ago. We just have to wait and see. Notice that really bright twinkling star. That's that's different from the rest of the entire starscape. Again, space confirmed. Okay, this major master ball looking cathedral, or maybe just pokeball, but you know, it looks a little purpley from here. According to my Portuguese friend, this building looks as a mix of Gothic style, Baroque architecture, and Catalan modernism, like the famous Sangrada Familia in Barcelona. I'm gonna go Google that right now. That's a heck of a cathedral. This looks like something out of Final Fantasy, that's for sure. Another really dramatic lens flare. Love this Dratini fountain in front of like, that's, that's a Mediterranean villa. Uh, love it. Love the foliage everywhere, orange trees everywhere. Here we get our first look at the center of town. Before you're even wondering, I counted. There are 17 types. I do not believe we are getting a new type of Pokemon being introduced in these games. But if that is something that they want to do, they could just easily replace this texture with an updated one that includes 18 different types. We see this very, very large scale center of town, which again, does seem to be appropriate with how small these people are and how big this tiling is on these Portuguese sidewalks. This also could be a good representation of how freely you could just kind of move around. It's unknown if these are actually going to be shops or if this is just going to be, you know, fake storefronts. It seems like this one here with the big eyeglasses, maybe that's going to be, you know, a shop you can interact with. Whether it's gonna be an actual place that maybe you could change your character's eye color with contacts, or whether it's gonna be one of those faux shops that we saw present on the main streets of the larger cities in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like the guy who gave you the earpiece that lets you adjust the music. The fact that the camera is now panning through this entranceway here to this large center of town, this kind of feels really in line with that circle with the two lines that we saw drawing in the room. Obviously, because this is very early footage of a not finished game, it's gonna be really important that this large center of town is bustling. There has to be people here. They have to be moving. They have to be walking around. By this day and age and this standard of 2022, to have NPCs just standing there doing nothing. I mean, we saw these guys move a little bit. I, I think that was just more of an example of what's going on. This obviously has none of the models or characters currently present, but in a large, beautiful town square like this, it's gonna look really wrong if there's 12 people. Know what I mean? We see one of the shots of what we can presume to be the player's starting home. It's a beautiful little villa in the countryside. This feels like possibly like it was in Pokemon Sword and Shield. You start in that small western side that's going to be Portugal, and then you make your way east to the large side that's going to be Spain. We see your disgusting child model running toward the house. Really not, really not a fan of how they look. Maybe it'll grow on me, maybe it'll change. We'll see. As I mentioned before, common thing in Spanish culture, the flamingo. Am I, I don't think I'm saying that right. You know, in America, we have the idea of flamingo dancers, but I know that flamingo is also just a style of music. I love this little hobbit plant. Love it. Oh, look at these albums. I want this album. That's a dope looking album art. Is that an Eevee? Is this, is this a scary looking Eevee? Maybe we have no evolution confirmed and a water bottle. Here we have a very faint image of what we could presume is going to end up being the in-game map. We see that large archipelago of islands present in the northwest. We see a large possibly desert area just below that. We also see these landmark icons, possibly cities. When zooming out from the OLED switch, we now see the southern border of the town map. That does not really show us much else. And that brings us back to the room. That's everything I was able to find in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer. If you are excited for this game, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel. Currently, we're covering Pokemon Legends Arceus, as well as updates that are happening for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And we're definitely going to be covering this game. Hopefully, it doesn't release too close to possibly the sequel to Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this video. Until next time, Austin John out.